Hi students, uh, today's lesson is a uh, factors and forms of L reviews. This lesson is about factors and forms of L reviews and neglect. It explains various forms of L reviews and factors that contribute to it. Further, the study helps to gain understanding about different parties involved in the L reviews. The objectives of the lesson is to explain various forms of elder abuse and neglect, describe various parties involved in the elder abuse and understand the different factors of elder abuse. Let me discuss the concept and origination of elder abuse. The abuse of older people by family members dates back to ancient times until the dawn of initiatives to address child abuse and domestic violence. It remained a private matter, hidden from public view, initially seen as a social welfare issue and subsequently a problem of aging. Abuse of elderly, like other forms of family violence, has developed into a public health and criminal justice concern. Industrialization is destroying long-standing patterns of interdependence between the generations of a family, often resulting in material and emotional hardship for the elderly. The family and community networks in many developing countries that had formerly provided support to the older generation have been weakened and often destroyed by rapid social and economic change. The AIDS epidemic is also significantly affecting the lives of the older people. In many parts of the sub-Saharan Africa, for instance, children are being orphaned in large number as their parents die from the disease. Older people who had expected support from their children in old age are finding themselves to to be the main caregivers and without a family to help them in the future. Initially, elder abuse was first identified in developed countries, where most of the existing research has been conducted. Subject to evidence and other reports from some developing countries have shown that it is a universal phenomenon. Concern over the mistreatment of older people has been heightened by the realization that in the coming decades, in both developed and developing countries, the elder abuse is being taken for more seriously now reflects the growing worldwide concern about the human rights and gender equality as well as about domestic violence and population aging. This lesson focuses on forms of elder abuse by family members or others known to them either in their homes or in residential or other institutional settings. It is generally agreed that abuse of older people is either an act of commission or of omission and that it may be either intentional or unintentional. The abuse may be of a physical nature, it may be psychological, or it may be involves financial or other material maltreatment. Regardless of the type of abuse, it will certainly result in unnecessary suffering, injury or pain, the loss or violence of human rights, and a decreased quality of life for the older person. Whether the behavior is termed abusive, neglectful or exploitative will probably depend on how frequently the mistreatment occurs its duration, severity and consequences, and above all, the cultural context also. A consistent definition is needed to monitor the incidence of elder abuse and examine trends over time. Consistency helps to determine the magnitude of elder abuse, enables comparisons of problems across the locations. This ultimately informs prevention and intervention efforts. However, for better understanding of the forms and risk factors of elder abuse, we need to understand the following definition. This definition developed by Action on Elder Abuse in United Kingdom and adopted by the International Network for the Prevention of Elder Abuse. It states that elder abuse is a single or repeated act or lack of appropriate action occurring within any relationship where there is an expectation of trust which causes harm or distress to an older person. Understanding and knowing what the differences between the different forms of elder abuse is extremely important. Each type of abuse has its own set of signs and symptoms associated with it. Abuse of elders takes many different forms, some involving intimidation or threats against the elderly, some involving neglect and others involving financial deception. The most common are physical abuse. Physical abuse of the elderly is defined as using some type of physical force on an elderly person that can be expected to cause bodily harm, ongoing impairment or physical pain. This may include striking the individual with the hands or an object. 
Physical abuse can also involve using drugs inappropriately, a physical punishment, force feeding the individual and using physical restraints. Symptoms and signs of physical abuse includes broken bones, skull fractures, unexplained cuts, open wounds, dislocations, internal injuries or bleeding etc. Sexual abuse. Sexual abuse of an elderly is defined as having non-consensual sex with an older, emotional or psychological abuse. Emotional abuse of an elder is defined as imposing pain, suffering or distress by verbal or non-verbal means. This can include insulting the elder, engaging in verbal assaults, humiliating the elder, threatening the elder, intimidating the elder or harassment. During emotional abuse, the elderly person is often treated like a child and is isolated from activities and they may not be able to enjoy with their family members or fellow beings. Emotional abuse can also involve giving the elderly person the silent treatment or keeping them socially isolated. Neglect of the elderly. Neglect of the elderly person usually means refusing or failing to provide the elder with the necessities of life such as water, food, shelter, clothing, medicine, hygiene, a personal safety or comfort that is required. It may also include failing to care for the elder by someone who has obligations to give care to the elder. It can involve failing to pay for home health care services or failing to provide essential care to the patient. Abandonment of the elder. Abandonment of an elder is an important form of elder abuse. It can define as leaving the senior by someone who has responsibilities for caring for the individual or who has custody over them. Chronic depression, decreased self-esteem, feelings of loss of control over life, self-depreciation, isolation and leaving the senior at the public places like as shopping mall, railway stations or bus stations etc. are the important signs and symptoms of abandonment of the elderly. Financial abuse. A financial abuse of an elder is defined as illegal or improper use of funds or resources of the older person. This may include changes in the bank account or large amounts of the money withdrawn, changes to legal documents such as the will or power of attorney, misuse of elderly persons, possessions or funds, forging signatures on titles or other financial transactions etc. Self-neglect self -neglect among elders is characterized by an elder individual engaging in behaviors that threaten their personal safety or health. It usually is seen when an older person refuses or fails to provide themselves with the proper amount of water, food, shelter, clothing, medications, hygiene and safety precautions. Signs and symptoms of self-neglect include living in inadequate places or being homeless, failing to have or use medical aids, living in unsanitary living environments and in unclean conditions. Why do family members mistreat older persons? What factors place older persons at risk? These are all the critically important questions but finding answers stands a number of difficult challenges for the researchers and practitioners in the field of gerontology. It is necessary to identify populations at higher risk and the causes of that heightened risk before the costs and benefits of reducing exposure can be determined. In general, risk factors are identified as experiences, behaviors, aspects of lifestyles or environment or personal characteristics that increase the chances that elder mistreatment will occur. Increased risk factors exposure increases the probability of the occurrence of elder mistreatment. In this lesson, a small number of this wide range of possible risk factors has been discussed. It is likely to categorize into four important levels, individual, relationship, community and society which have been causing elder abuse and neglect. Individual factors. Individual personality disturbances are the main casual agents of family violence in favor of social and cultural factors. Abusers who abuses the older people generally have physical aggressiveness and likely to have personality disorders. Violence against older people in domestic settings has found that aggressors are more likely to have mental health and substance abuse problems than family members or caregivers. Cognitive and physical impairments of the abused older person were strongly identified in the early studies as risk factors for abuse. Drug addicts and alcohol addicts are also causing violence against the older people than general population. Gender is also one of the defining factor in the elder abuse on the grounds that older women subjected to oppression and economically disadvantaged. Property of the older person was a significant factor of elder abuse in many parts of the country. Sometimes this was related to an 
adult child substance abuse problem leading him or her to extort money possibly a pension check from the older person as per the research study more than 35% of the elderly faced abuse due to the property issues resentment by family members at having to spend money on the care of the older person may also have played a, a part in the abuse of this nature and relationship factors elder people are easily and emotionally attached with their children as they are sources in their old age hence the nature of relations between the older persons and their children may influence the relationship and it may cause to the elder abuse a research study reports that 46% of the elderly reported that the family members are busy with their own work lives and neglect the elderly and 29% of the elderly feel neglected as the family members do not spend time with them even when they not busy with the work caregiver stress alzheimer's disease dependency and elder abuse are having associated relationship between the caregivers and the care recipient the level of stress of the caregivers was seen as a risk factor that linked elder abuse with the care of the elderly relative and living arrangements particularly overcrowded conditions and lack of privacy have been associated with the conflict within the families dependency of the victim on the caregiver or abuser may increase the risk of abuse in the other hand it was identified that abusers who were dependent on the older person usually adult children dependent on the elderly parents for housing and financial assistance and community factors the older persons have to face the community adjustments and their own experiences and have to transmit the same to the younger generation hence the problem of understanding new community and compromise with the changing environment setup may lead to the old age with the difficulties the system of patrilineal and matrilineal inheritance and the land rights affecting the way societies view the role of women the erosion of the close bond between generations of a family a traditional ritual and family arbitration roles of the older people are the main community factors affecting the overall well-being of older persons social factors poverty and violence dysfunctional family life a lack of money for essentials and lack of education and job opportunities are currently considered important as risk factors for the elder abuse in both developing and industrialized countries many of the social communities older people are viewed as targets for abuse and exploitation their vulnerability being a result of poverty distinguished by a lack of pension support and for job opportunities poor hygiene disease and malnutrition cultural norms and traditions such as ageism sexism and culture of violence are also now recognized as playing an important underlying role social isolation and family privacy are vital factors which can insulate the family from the both social control and assistance in coping with intra family conflict many older people are isolated because of physical or mental infirmities furthermore loss of friends and family members social isolation lack of respect by the younger generation disintegration of joint family system restructuring of the basic support networks for the elderly and migration of young couples to new towns are the common social factors witnessed for the mistreatment of indian society who are involved in elder abuse victim person on whom the abuse is inflicted or who experiences abuse survivor is often used as synonym for victim perpetrator or offender person or persons who inflicts or causes the victim to experience abuse such persons must be in a relationship involving expectation of trust current or former legal spouse someone to whom the victim is or was legally married as well as a separated legal spouse other intimate partner other intimate partner includes current common law spouses current boyfriends or girlfriends partners opposite or, son, or same sex former common law spouses or former boyfriends or girlfriends or partners child a child refers to a person's biological or legal adopted offspring including son or daughter it may also include step children and foster children other family members or relatives other family members or relatives refers to someone sharing a relationship by blood or marriage or other legal contact or arrangement that is legal adoption foster parenting etc this includes current as well as former family relationships therefore though not an exhaustive list step parents parents siblings grandchildren former in-laws and adopted family members are included in this category this category excludes the victims children caregiver 
Family as an informal caregiver includes any, any relative, partner, friend or neighbor who has a significant personal relationship with and provides a broad range of instrumental or the activities of daily living, assistance for an older adult. These individuals may be a primary or secondary caregivers, persons who assist a primary caregiver and live with or separately from the person receiving care. Formal caregiver. Formal caregiver is a provider associated with a formal service system, whether a paid worker or a volunteer. Care custodian. Care custodian is an individual entrusted with the care and maintenance of another person. Legal guardian. Legal guardian is a person who has been appointed by a court to possess the power and obligation to take care of and manage the property, well-being and or the rights of person who because of status as a minor, understanding or self-control is considered incapable of administering his or her own efforts. Other person in position of power or trust. Other person in position of power or trust includes persons such as a religious leader, advisor or employer, etc. Friend. This category involves anyone which whom the victim shares a substantial personal relationship but who is not related to the victim by blood or marriage and is not a current or former spouse, another current or former intimate partner, another family member or a person in an official position of power or trust. Equitants or persons of casual equitance refers to someone who is known casually to or recognized by the victim with whom no substantial personal relationship exists who is not related to the victim by blood or marriage and is not a current or former spouse, another current or former intimate partner, another family member, a friend, a person in any official position of power or trust or a stranger. Stranger. Stranger is a person who is not known to the victim whom no substantial personal pre-existing relationship exists. For older people, the consequences of abuse can be especially serious. Older people are physically weaker and more vulnerable than younger adults. Their bones are more fragile and restoration takes longer. Even a relatively minor injury can cause serious and permanent damage. Many older people survive on limited incomes so that the loss of even a small sum of money can have a significant impact. They may be isolated, lonely or troubled by illness in which case they are more vulnerable as targets for fake schemes. What can be done to prevent elder abuse? The impact that physical and psychological violence have on the health of an older person is impaired by the aging process and diseases of old age. It is more difficult for the elderly to leave an abusive relationship or to make correct de decisions because of the physical and cognitive impairments that usually come with old age. In some places, kinship obligations may also reduce the ability of older people. Often, the abuser may be the abused person's only source of companionship. Because of these and other considerations, preventing elder abuse presents a whole host of problems for practitioners. Prevention starts with awareness. One important way to raise awareness both among the public and the concerned professionals is through education and training. Those providing healthcare and social services at all levels, both in the community and the institutional setting, should receive basic training on the detection of older abuse. The media are a second powerful tool for raising awareness of the problem and its possible solutions among the general public as well as the authorities. Many of the research studies at policy level and practice level suggested that following measures to prevent or control elder abuse, these are existing laws on domestic or intra-family violence should be extended to include older people as a group. Relevant existing criminal and civil laws should explicitly cover the abuse neglect and exploitation of older people. Government should introduce new laws specifically to protect older people. Recruiting and training older people to serve as visitors or companions to other older people who are isolated. Creating support groups for victims of elder abuse, setting up community programs to stimulate social interaction and participation among the elderly. Building social networks of older people in villages, neighborhoods or housing units. Working with older people to create self-help programs that enable them to be productive. <music> Neglect of elder people is one of the most important factors of abuse. In addition to that, emotional problems, lack of emotional support, feeling of insecurity, loss of dignity, maltreatment, disrespect, 
by the family are also increasing the pain of the elder people in the context of abuse. However, mainstreaming the older people has been required by the realization that in the coming decades, in both developed and developing countries, there will be a dramatic increase in the population in the older age segment. Most of the programs set up to tackle the problem of abuse of the elderly are found in high income countries. They are generally conducted under the auspices of social services, health care or legal systems or in the conjunction with the programs to combat family violence. Although elder abuse has been proven to exist in several low income or middle income countries, few specific programs have been established. In these countries, cases of elder abuse are generally handled by governmental or non-governmental social service agencies. Greater knowledge about the problem, stronger laws and policies and more effective prevention strategies are the top priorities for the confronting and eradicating the problem of elder abuse.